The blockchain space holds unprecedented opportunity for developers to create brand new applications that no one has ever used before. And if you're a blockchain developer or you're an aspiring developer, then you've probably gotten the urge to create your own application at some point or another. But once you go down that road, there's always this question of what kind of application should you create? How do you actually find people to use it? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a blockchain application that people will actually use and how to find users for it. I'm gonna explain everything in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who has done this. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna know how to become a blockchain master so that you can create your own blockchain app or break into the blockchain industry, you know, increase your salary well past 100K, then I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about how to create your own blockchain application that people will actually use. So I wanna lay out some criteria in this video for these types of applications. So number one, it's an application that people can realistically create as a solo developer. You don't need a massive team to do this. Something with negligible operating costs once you get it going or completely free. Something where you can acquire real users with not very much effort and no paid advertising costs. Something that steers clear of any potential regulatory concerns like launching your own cryptocurrency. And then finally, something where you don't have to come up with a revolutionary idea. You can just build an integration off of something that already exists. All right. And so in order to find an example of an application just like this, we're going to narrow down the criteria even further and create a simple formula. What we're going to do is build an integration off of an exact application that already exists. So basically, we're going to find protocols that people are already using on the blockchain and then find a way to do things with those applications that you can't do some other way and or make the process way easier. So I'm going to give you a framework for coming up with ideas that meet this formula. But let's go ahead and just look at some real world examples because I think these are going to illustrate what I'm talking about before we get into that part. So number one is an application called FriendMex. So I actually put this out on my Twitter uh, last week because I thought this was a brilliant application. So what is it? What does it do? Well, basically, you might have seen one of my last videos talking about Friend.Tech, which is a brand new blockchain application out there for social tokens. Well, friend.tech is a completely mobile application, meaning you have to download the app in order to use it. But the smart contracts for it are completely on the blockchain. And what this one developer did in a matter of days was create a user interface that's web based. That's a lot more like a DEX terminal for your web browser where you can find these social tokens, look at all the trading history and snipe new tokens as soon as they hit the chain. So this does something that you can't do somewhere else. And it's something this developer created in just a matter of days and people are already using it. So another application like this is something like DEX Screener, which has lots of other competitors in the marketplace. But basically what it does is it lets you find new decentralized exchange trading pairs so that other people can find new tokens right after they launch and start trading them. So all the information about this is out there on chain. This is really just an aggregator that puts it in one spot and gives you sophisticated metrics about the projects and also shows like the uh, you know charts for trading. All right, and finally, the last example of an application is from like Unibot, which is a pretty big trend right now which is basically Telegram trading bots. So what this does is a similar idea to the previous project. It finds new tokens that are hitting decentralized exchanges and then just gives you a stream of activity for those tokens inside of your Telegram application. And then you can choose to you know, purchase the tokens directly from the Telegram app. So all the pieces of the puzzle are out there to making this type of thing. It's completely open. All you have to do is put them together in order to create this type of value. All right, so each of these different applications that I just showed you that are out there in the wild follow the formula that I was talking about. Basically, they just take existing projects and then create some type of user interface to get some benefit out of those projects that you can't really get somewhere else or it makes something a lot easier. And you don't have to launch a new token in order to do this with the exception of the last project, but you don't need a token to create something like that. And these are all realistically... Uh, feasible for one developer to create them in a pretty short amount of time. All right, so if you want to find other ideas a lot like these for applications that you can create that people will actually use, then what are some sort of heuristics or some ideas that you can follow a framework to start generating these ideas yourself? Well, step number one is going to be to solve an actual problem, okay? So you have to think about why would anybody use the application in the first place? Well, it has to solve a problem. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to actually create an application that you yourself would use. So if you create an app that you get a benefit out of and then you open that up for other people to use, you know, 99% chance that at least one other person is going to find value out of it too. 
And if that's the case, then there's at least 10 times that many people who could also use it if you find them, and probably a lot more than that. So step number two is actually validate the problem and the use case. And this is really easy to do whenever you have other people who are using these applications in the wild, but then you create an interface for them to use it in a way in which they can't already. So the example of like FriendMex, like I was talking about before, you know, friend.tech just kind of became an overnight success. There's lots of people downloading the mobile app to do speculation with social tokens. You can see that that's already happening, okay? It's got a ton of traction. And so if you create a different way for people to access this, you're going to find people who will actually use it. So validating the idea, validating the activity of the application behind itself, what they're doing behind the scenes before you build the integration is baked into this entire equation already. So step number three is to find something that has a trend, okay? Preferably is in the early part of a trend. Now, this is kind of a self-fulfilling thing inside of crypto because I think pretty much all of crypto is a trend that's going to grow over time. But if you can find smaller trends that will have more percentage growth relative to the overall crypto trend, that can be a pretty big recipe for success with your application. And, you know, going back to the friend max thing, like I talked about in a video, sorry, a second ago, you know, friend.tech came out of nowhere and started getting lots of, you know, activity really quickly at the time of recording this video. I think it made over a million dollars in the last 24 hours. So that's an example of finding the trend. And the good thing is, you can find trends completely on the blockchain because all the data is out there. You can use lots of different tools like on-chain analytics, maybe with DeFi Llama or some type of other on-chain metrics tool. And then you can also just use things like social sentiment, what are people starting to talk about a lot on apps like Twitter, and what seems to be on the rise that have a next explosive move. And so if you can hitch your wagon to one of these trends early, that can be a recipe for people basically starting to use the application and get lots of users really fast. All right, so step number four is to make your app completely free. Okay, at least to start off with, what you want to do is put something out there where people will actually use it and get value of it where they don't have to pay for anything, okay? That's a pretty surefire way to actually get users. Because if you launch an application and nobody knows you and they're uncertain of what the value proposition of the application is, they haven't tested it out, and you put up a paywall or something that they have to give money before they can use the application, then that's gonna be a lot harder way to get users, okay? There can be a path to monetization for your app over the long term, but what you wanna do out the gate is make it completely free because it's gonna be way easier to actually get people to start using it. And if you're using the application yourself and getting value out of it, it's gonna be really easy to convince somebody else to do it if there's no cost. And you might have an objection to say, hey, well, this app might cost money to run, but an application like this, okay, you could create this pretty fast. I mean, if you're an experienced developer, you know, on top, this would take you a week to actually launch, okay? So it's not that much of your time in terms of cost. And then this is a site that could be hosted for free, basically. It's just a front-end website that connects to the blockchain. Obviously, you want to have some performance benefits out of it, so you want to increase the server capabilities a little bit. But this is an application that could be, you know, run on the amount of money you might spend on coffee in a month. All right, so the next step in the process is to actually start marketing the project. So this is where it gets really simple, okay? Because really the goal here is just getting an application with users. You can find a path to monetization later, but initially you just want to get people using it that's not you, that's not your friends or family. So how can you do this? Well, once you have a free application that provides real value, one of the easiest ways to do that is just to get into places where people are talking about crypto and then promote your application. So an example would be something like Discord, okay? Or Telegram groups where people are, you know, talking about the type of problem that your application solves. Let's say it's trading tokens. That's a pretty big use case in crypto. People are talking about, you know, uh, friend.tech. Well, you could just get into a group and say, you know, hey, everybody, here's this awesome site that lets you trade tokens on friend.tech and find new projects where you don't have to download a mo mobile application. Or you can do everything on your desktop with your MetaMask wallet, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And you don't even have to tell people that it's your application. You can just say, hey, this website's awesome. I just started using it. And that makes it seem like a more authentic promotion of the application if you're just somebody talking about it without disclosing that you created it. And it's hard to think that you couldn't get some early users from that type of activity alone. And the other bonus of this is you don't have to spend a bunch of time creating a social following. It really is a situation. If you build it, they will come as long as you put it in front of the right people. Now, once you've got that, you can obviously add, you know, scaling on top of that for your marketing efforts, which you can start spending time you know, doing social media. Okay, let's say you just do have a Twitter account, for example, you could build this thing in public and talk about it. And then, you know, get people, you know, drawing back to the application that way, and then talking about what value it provides. And the other beauty of this, if it's a free application that people are actually getting value out of, the product itself can be the marketing. Okay, it's good to have some marketing efforts on your own just to get it started and to also help it grow. 
But, you know, a good percentage of that growth can come from other people just, you know, talking about it, posting links to it. With something like friend.tech, there's lots of incentive to share something like this because that's what the value of tokens comes from is more people using the applications. And so now what about monetization? Well, we can talk about that. Now, the goal of this is really just to get an application out that has users. That's a massive thing for you to do as a developer. But in terms of monetization, you know, first, again, I stress, you want to have your application be completely free at first. But some of the low-hanging fruit that you can do are serve ads on the project, okay? That's not going to make you a ton of money, especially if you don't have a lot of eyeballs in your project, but it's something that could at least pay for the hosting cost of the application itself. Now, once you have users, you can start doing things like charging fees for the application. Maybe there's a transaction fee for some of the features inside your app. You want to check into that. You want to make sure there's no regulatory concerns of any assets you might be trading. But if your site is purely just an information site, there's nothing that says you can't create some type of software as a service model where people can pay for that information over time as well. Now, if you do that, though, you want to maintain the features that you've created for free and keep them free because you don't want people just being like, okay, I was using this for a long time and now I just have to pay in order to keep using it. Now, you could probably get away with that if you operate it at a very, very, very large scale. But my advice, if you're just starting out and this is your first application you ever created, you want to add on some additional features outside of the free ones to start charging for. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is the upside and downside risk with a project like this, because whenever I you know, try something new. I always want to know what's the, what's the upside potential for success and what's the downside potential for failure. Well, it goes out saying the upside potential of creating a wildly successful application in the crypto space is basically infinite. Okay. If you create an application a lot of people use, you can start charging money for it and make a nice income yourself. This application could get acquired by somebody else. You could get a really nice payday in terms of acquisition. But in terms of downside, it's so low. There almost is no downside because if you're a developer, and you're trying to become a developer, let's say you don't even finish the application. You're going to learn a lot in the first place. And if you do finish the application and you only get a handful of users or no users, well, if you have an application out there in the wild that has real benefit to other people, it's a massive resume piece for yourself. So if you're trying to break into the industry and you created a real world blockchain application, that's going to open doors for you that you would not be able to open any other way. Similarly, if you're an experienced developer and you're just you know, in blockchain already and you want to have some mobility in your career, if you create an application and put it out there and let's say it just has a modest number of active users, but people are still using it all the time, providing value, that likewise is going to be an ultimate resume piece that can open lots of doors for you for other career opportunities in the future. All right. So that's an overview of how to create a blockchain application that people will actually use with real world examples and a framework on how to find these types of ideas yourself. So if you want to do exactly what I'm talking about this video, first of all, you need the skills in order to do this. So first of all, make sure you smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And then if you want to get the skills in order to pull this off and break in the blockchain industry, then how can you do that? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step or hey, Maybe you'll take a master's work entirely. I should become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish over at adaptdiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I help people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Adaptdiversity.